Good morning, everyone. Welcome to today's session on BC 201 on Christian history and missions. Today, uh, we have three of them sharing the presentation, starting with Paul Ivatu, who will be sharing on Robert Morrison, who was the first pro Protestant missionary in China, followed by Georgia Hamilton. She will be sharing on Robert Moffat was the father of Protestant African missions. And then we have Laya Lama share on Dr. John Scudder Jr., the medical missionary in India. So we will start with Paul Ivatu. Over to Paul. Yes, uh, Jafina, can you help me share the screen? Yes, yes. Yes. Thank you and good morning, everyone. I'm sharing about uh, Robert Morrison. He was the first Protestant missionary in China. Uh, Robert Son, he was born on the 5th of January, 1782, in Bola, Green Northern in England. And he died on 1st of August, 1833. He was a Prosperian minister. He was also a translator and a London missionary societies. Actually, first missionary that was sent to China. He is also considered as the father of the Protestant missionary work in China. Concerning his studies, after his studies in theology and Chinese, he was ordained in 1807 and he was immediately sent by the, 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 the society to Canton, that is in China. So, brief look at his work. In 1809, he became the translator to the East Indian Company. That was a post which he held till his death. Uh, him together with, with that company, their first translation of the Bible appeared in 1821. Uh, among Morristone's other works are the, the grammar of the Chinese language that, he, that was published in 1815, and a dictionary of the Chinese language, that, which was in three parts, that was from 1815 to 1823. After his death, uh, another school of Chinese youth located first in, in Malacca in 1838, and later Hong Kong in 1842, was established by the newly founded Morristown Education Society. So look at some of the challenges that he faced. His years in China were marked by constatation, tension with the government that discouraged its people from having contact with the foreigners. So that was a very big challenge. And also we find that within the, the 27 years that he was in China, only 10 con converts were baptized. That was in the 27 years. And but what we could see out of the 10 converts, each of them proved to be very, very faithful. Then uh, admission of another convert called Liang Afar, to the office of the evangelist was, was also the first Protestant ordination that was performed in China. So having seen that, let us look at some of the, lesson, uh, the lessons that can work as application for us today. Today, as, uh, as intercessors, we need to pray for the government so that they, they are brought on board so that missionary work is not interfered with, as we saw the case in, in China. 
Also, the Bible tells us in Romans chapter 18 that we are supposed to respect authority. So if the government, whatever the government say, we have to obey. If they say no preaching, you, we have to obey. Like we saw during the, the, the COVID lockdown, the government, government passed a resolution. There was no charge. There was no congregation. So in the same way, as intercessors, if we don't pray for the government, if we don't bring them on board, the work of missionary is is interfered with. They have to be on on your side for the for the for the gospel to prosper. Then also, if you read according to Isaiah chapter fifty nine, verse nineteen, the Bible tells us that when the enemies arise like the flood, the spirit of God will lift up the standard. So we saw with these con converts, there were only ten, but the story tells us that they they were they were very very faithful. They proved to be very very faithful amid all the the contestation, the tension that the government put on them. They remain very very faithful because they had the grace and the anointing of God, where there were so many enemies. So they they proved very very strong. So that's the lesson that we that we can learn that God always will lift your standard where you face challenges. God is able to, 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 to lift up your standard. That's what the Bible says. Uh, I think that is that. I don't know whether I have still more. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank Paul. You, thank you, thank Paul. you very thank well. You, very you shared. Well you shared. Thank you. So, uh, yeah, so, class, so yeah, you can go yeah, ahead so and you post your comments post your on Paul Ivato's uh, presentation. Thank you. That was a good presentation. God bless you, Paul. Okay, the next we will go with Georgia Hamilton. Georgia, you can present, you can share. And Robert Muffet. So can I just speak because the presentation is not ready? Can I just talk? No worries, no worries. You can just speak about this person. All right. So good morning, everyone. It's actually night where I am now because I live in Jamaica. <laughs> so, good morning. So good my morning. presentation is on Robert Muffat. And he is the father of Protestant African missions. Now, Robert Moffat went to Africa in 1816. He, is, he was called in South Central Africa, where he did most of his blessed work, the Moshet of the Bekunayans. I think I'm pronouncing that wrong. But when he died in 1883, he was venerated as the spiritual father of many won by him for christ not only among the becuans but also among the zulus the hotinot the hotentots and the matabele he is known among europeans and africans as robert robert moffat he was the pathfinder for the missionaries in south africa and he was the man who called david livingstone to his benighted land. Now, Robert Moffat was born on December 21st, 1795 at the Ormiston in East Lothian, Scotland. When he had reached the age of 11 years, he was sent to school where he stayed but six months. The atmosphere of the place did not suit him, so he ran away from it and from home to become a sailor. Since work in Scotland was both scarce and ill-paid, Robert went to England where he was more profitably employed in Cheshire by a Mr. Lee. Before he left Scotland, he promised his mother that he would read his Bible every day and he faithfully kept his word. Now, when he was in England, he became acquainted with the Methodist and by them was included to offer himself as a missionary to some foreign field. 
He was accepted by the London Missionary Society and so diligently he devoted himself to the study of theology and other useful branches of knowledge, that together with eight others. On September 30, 1816, he could be ordained to the Christian ministry in Sur Surrey Chapel, Blackfriars Road, London. In October 1816, Robert Moffat, with his five companions, sailed for Cape Town, South Africa, which was reached in January 1816. Before leaving for Africa, he had become engaged to Miss Mary Smith, who wished to accompany him on the perilous journey. But her parents objected to the marriage, and Mary Smith did not join the, mission, the great missionary until three years later. At first, the Hottenot seemed to, seemed to him to be hopelessly degraded. They had hardly had any knowledge of God and no idea whatever right or wrong was. The old people were left to perish while undesired infants were cast away. Adultery, theft, murder were perpet perpetuated with impunity and apparently without any complications. He succeeded in winning Africana the chief for Christ. And when after three years, Moffat took him to Cape Town to prove the deputies of the London Missionary Society that his work had not altogether been without success. He earned government support when officials realized that he had solved the problem through his religious efforts. Moffat also explored the Kalar Hari Desert and as a result was named to, the, to head a mission station on his way. He encountered a flood of refugees fleeing the advance of the nebulae under Zilikatsi. These people soon took over a number of villages and Moffat rushed to warn the neighboring communities. And in a fierce struggle, the refugees were warded off and he won favor with those in the villages. He began translating the book of Luke, and in 1829, his work finally bore fruit and the services were crowded. Within a few years, there were well-instructed converts and a flourishing school and a permanent church. Robert Moffat also went along to do a Swana translation, Seswana translation of the Bible in 1857. And he also did Pilgrim's Progress and a hymn book. He traveled extensively, even though by this time, more than 60 years old, in 1854, he set out across the Kalari Desert, covering over 700 miles approximately 120 kilometers a good deal by the compass in the conclusion as the first missionary he did exceptionally well winning the souls of many and he is well known as one of the pioneers of evangelizing in africa that is my presentation wow that's nice thank you georgia for sharing on robert mufford it was a blessing class please go ahead and share your comments on the presentation of georgia thank you good job so um yeah once we create a classwork tab and you know i request all the students to please post your assignments on that there would be a due date kindly post it before the due date because after which the system won't be accepting your um presentation of the classwork whatever research you have done your word doc or the ppt it won't accept it so request you all to please keep the due date make sure that everyone uploads it because it is a graded assessment for your course yeah uh, with that we will move on to the next person let me end this presentation thank you thank you georgia for a good job okay um next we have laya lama Yes, ma'am. Yeah, Laya Lama, you can go ahead and share your presentation. So you're mm -hmm. sharing on Dr. John Scudder, Jr., medical missionary, came to India. 
Yes, yes, ma'am. Yes, please. Uh, is it visible now? Not yet. Okay, okay, something is happening. Yes, good. Okay, ah. it's visible. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. So, uh, my presentation is about Dr. John Scudder Jr. Uh, Dr. John Scudder Jr. Uh, was the youngest son of uh, John Scudder Sr. Uh, and uh, John Scudder Sr. had like eight children among them he was the youngest son and he sailed to india uh, with his wife in wife sophia in 1860 he had six children uh, and they were john lewis and the charles henry johnston walter and uh, a daughter ida scudder uh, three of his children became missionary following his father including doctor Ida uh, uh, she started Christian Medical College and Hospital in uh, Vellore, India in 1980. John Scudder Jr. was a medical doctor like his father. Uh, he did a uh, uh, medical mission, uh, mission in India. Uh, 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 he provided, um, uh, how to say, sorry. <laughs> He provided medical uh, help to the uh, sick people. He joined, and then he joined the Arcot, Arcot mission of the Reformed Church in 1861. His father, John Scudder Sr., was the first Scudder American medical missionary in India. He was the first in his family, and later his family followed him. And uh, he had been missionary uh, uh, for 39, year, uh, 39 years. Uh, I, until until his death, Arcot Mission of the Reformed Church was located in the Arcot Tamil Nadu, India, which was founded by Scudder family in order to provide medical help and to proclaim Christ's love through medical service. When the Arcot Mission was founded, women were not allowed to be the missionaries, even they were like involved in uh, every work. They were working with the. Uh, with the man hand to hand, still they were not allowed to be the missionaries. Only men were allowed. The Arcot mission was known for its medical care as well as giving good quality education to the oppressed communities in India. Its another mission was to preach the gospel in order to convert the mass into Christianity by using uh, by fusing both Christian and Hindu views. When people con uh, converted, especially high caste peoples refused to give up their caste, which created many issues. To solve the issue, they set a guideline for people who were wishing to convert, in which people needed to renounce the use of caste forever and had to renounce their caste again before they went to communion. It became the utmost important rule of the Arcot mission and were followed very strictly. The mission built up uh, an indigenous church in which the Indians had full membership and equality. With its independence granted in 1947, missionary activities were restricted. Dr. John Scudder uh, Jr. died at the age of 63. He was born on 29 October 1836 uh, uh, in Chavagajiri, Ceylon, hostess camp, Kadalore, Tamil Nadu, India. And he died on 23 May 1900, Kodai Kanal, Tamil Nadu, India. And his burial was in American Mission Cemetery, uh, Kodai Kanal, Tamil Nadu, India. Thank you. This is my presentation. Ma'am, you are mute. Please unmute yourself. 
Yes, yes. Thanks, thanks. Thanks, Lael Amo, for sharing on Dr. John Skada, Jr., medical missionary in India. It's a wonderful testimony to hear about him and about his family. Maybe in the next few classes, we can also hear about the Ida Skada and a heart uh, towards the Lord and towards the mission work in India and how um, God saw the faithfulness of our heart and how he established the work, which is still an ongoing thing in India because Bellor CMC is known by itself um, for the work that has still been continued. So we can see like when the Lord establishes, um, you know, he is faithful enough to keep it going that even the person may be there or may not be there, but the Lord's work is still continuing. Okay, so unlike, uh, you know, each one carried that fire that God birthed in them. You see, it is not something that they thought and they started. No, it was the Lord who put those vision uh, um, vision in their heart, and it literally strengthened them. You know, the fire that sparked within them didn't get quenched within a day or within a few weeks or months or years, but then it only increased. This flame started burning within them to reach out, to do what the Lord is asking them to do. So class, it's not something that we are studying or learning something on the history or um, getting to know about different people. No, that's not the main intention of this class. Though we may be less in number, but then each one have a call and a purpose which God has called each one of us with. There is a spark, there's a fire within you. The Spirit of the Lord who's ministering to each one of you, there is a purpose. God has called each one of us with a purpose. Just like how we heard about different speakers today, like, you know, each one shared about, uh, you know, Robert, uh, Paul shared about Robert Morrison and um, Georgia shared about Robert Moffat. And we uh, recently heard about, you know, Dr. John Scudder shared by Laya Lama. You see, each one of them had a purpose. It's not about the number. It's not about how many years you're serving in that place. But even if you see the life of Robert Morrison, he only ministered to that sh small number in 27 years, the 10 of them. But the 10 were faithful. It's not very easy, isn't it? The Spirit of the Lord who's in each one of us is greater. Because that's what the scripture says, great is he who is in you than he that is in the world. The Lord who called you is called you with a purpose. Each one of us should fulfill that purpose along with God by our side. So in today's class, when we looked at each person's life, let's look at our own self today. Let's ask God, God, what is that call, that purpose that you have called me for? Lord, reveal it. For some of them, yes, God has already revealed it. Maybe some of them are already pregnant with the vision that they have got, asking God, strengthen me. Help me to deliver it in the right time. Give me that grace. Give me that strength. Give me that providence. Give me that uh, new idea, new strategy. Give me that help. When we pray, Lord will lead and guide us. So for those who have been praying and just been remembered of a scripture, let me turn to the book of Isaiah. So those who are with me, please turn to turn your Bibles to the book of Isaiah. Let me take out that scripture. Okay. Isaiah chapter 43, verse 19. Isaiah chapter 43, verse 19. I'll just read it for you. If you're ready. I would recommend you all to read Isaiah 1 to 21 itself. But then, you know, I'll just uh, give the scripture, verse 19. You know, um, 
if I go to 19, I would like to give you a promise, which, uh, which is in verse 7. Okay, Isaiah 43, verse 7 says, Everyone who is called by my name, whom I have created for my glory, I have formed him. Yes, I have made him. And in verse 10 and verse 12 says, You are my witness. You are my witness. Do you remember where you found this word in New Testament? Acts chapter 1 8. Can we turn to Acts chapter 1 8 as well? It says, But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. The God who called you. He has filled you with his Holy Spirit to raise you as a witness, to raise you as a witness in your home, in your church, in the city where you live in, in the country and to the world. That's how the Spirit of the Lord who's in you as the power to lift you and establish you in the place where you are. And verse 19 says, Behold, I will do a new thing, and now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I, I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. The Lord of the Lord God Almighty is saying that what is difficult for him to do. He can do much beyond what we can think, imagine, or ask for. He will do great and mighty things for you and me because he has called each one of us. And he will honor us. And he will also send men into our work. So today, let's ask God. God, as you have called me, no matter what circumstance each one of us may be in or what situation, but then you can always speak life into the situation because our God is greater than the mountain that each one of us are facing. He is greater. Some In the book of Psalms, it says, mountain melts at the presence of God. So what can stand against God or who can stand against God? Who can stop the work of God? Time and again, we see in the history when we are reading about each person, no matter how big the enemy can be and come against Jesus and the work of the gospel, who could stop it? We see the Spirit of the Lord move in simple people. Today, you and I, as we are listening, we may think, Lord, I have the heart to serve you. Your Lord, I am available, you may say. But Lord, is it possible? Is it possible? I'm unable to see any way. There is no way. There's no providence. The vision that you put in my heart is much bigger than what I could think, imagine, or ask, or I can do it. But remember one thing, friends. God always gives a vision that is beyond our ability. God's vision is beyond our ability. That's why it is called as God's vision. And he's put that in your heart because you are available. Because God has found you as faithful. There may be hundreds and thousands of people in this world but then God has chosen you. He has chosen you. The way he called Abraham, same like the same way he has called each one of us. And he will provide us. He will give us the vision. He will enrich us. He will strengthen us. He will make a way where there seems to be no way. All we have to do is be ready. Be focused on what God has called you. 
don't set a time for yourself we cannot you know put god in a box and limit him with the time no god is beyond our ability god is beyond the time he moves is the creator god god who calls things into existence okay so let's trust him and i would request each one from our class just as you're moved by the lord as you're led by the lord just unmute and start praying i would request at least three people from our class just unmute and start praying pour out your heart to god and say god establish the work of my hand lord the call the purpose that you have called me enable me to fulfill that along with you give me the strength make a way remove every obstacles that is on my way strengthen my weak hands just like how jeremiah prayed lord strengthen my hands that i may fulfill the call the purpose that you have called me for as isaiah said lord here i am send me each one had a cry in their heart and god heard that cry and god fulfilled it god established the work of their hands so today can i request each of you all as you're moved in spirit just unmute and pray lift your voice and pray the lord is going to hear because he is present he is in midst of us despite the place where we are we don't have to scream shout but then our god is a god who hears even the whisper of our lips not even one word that comes out of our lips will be turning toward because that's what he says in Isaiah 55:11 like every word that comes out of your lips will be heard so friends here i encourage you just unmute and pray let's just take time to pray and ask god god establish the work of our hands help us to fulfill the call the purpose that you have called each one of us Amen. Amen. You ask and say amen and agree with each one as they lift up their heart and pray to God. Let's agree and stand with the person. I would encourage others to just pray in spirit. And as the Lord moves, just unmute and pray. Lift up your voice and pray. Can I, can I pray? Yes, yes, please. Lord, I thank you for accepting us in your presence this morning. Thank you for this beautiful day that you have given us as stared by our tutor for us to pray that you establish your purpose in our hearts and to make us capable of carrying on the mantle. Lord, I pray and ask that today and henceforth, let your will be established in our heart. Let your will be established in my heart. You know, I was walking before and during my walking time, I promised that after my retirement, I could take up full-time uh, ministry. Lord, I'm on the journey, but I have distractions in my mind. Fill my mind with your spirit. Make me capable. I accept and I make myself available. Please give me the strength, the endurance, and the wisdom to carry on for the rest of my life. I want to serve you because you have been kind to me during my working days. 
now I have to work for you so that the work shall go ahead to establish the kingdom. Lord, this and all other masses, I ask in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ that you bless us, you bless me, you bless all of us in the school, bless our teachers, that this still continue to impact our minds and let our minds be a receptive ground so that we also can be a blessing to others that we will be leading. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. I know that you have accepted us. Thank you. Amen. 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 Thank you, Brother Isaac. Anyone in the class? Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Father God. Hallelujah, Lord Daddy. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for this moment, Father God. Thank you, Lord, for once again, Lord, talking to us, Father God, Lord, in that soft voice, Father God. Lord, you have chosen us, Father God. Lord, it is your will, Father God, that we have we have called to serve you, Father God. Lord, we pray, Father God. Lord, for I pray, Father God, for each and every one of us, O oh Lord, that we are here, Father God. Lord, we are preparing ourselves, Father God. Lord, as we, as we are surrendering ourselves, Father God, to that great will of yours, Father God. Lord, I pray, Father God, that please help us and guide us, Lord God. Lord, you know that how weak we are, Father God. Lord, you know, Father God, that how weak we are, Father God, but we need your strength, Holy Spirit. We need your guidance, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Lead us. Lead us in the way that you want us to go. Lead us, Father God, in that perfect will of yours father god lord we pray we commit we submit each and every one of us into your hands father god that that will of yours father god that you have established in our lives that you have called us to fulfill father god lord let it be fulfilled lord god in the mighty name of jesus lord we pray father god lord any obstacle in our way to reach our destiny for you O oh lord to fulfill our destiny for you O oh lord any obstacle father god in our way father may it be removed in the mighty name of jesus lord god almighty we dedicate we dedicate ourselves to you father god lord our emotions our will father god everything father our desires father god everything we rededicate to you father god and we ask you father god holy spirit we ask you to take complete charge over us to take complete control of our lives father god that our life may be a blessing for others O oh lord even as we are meditating and studying about so many so many uh revivalist father god lord lord they were they were only one person father god when they were called father god but they became a blessing to so many so so many nations father god lord even as we are one individually father god lord we pray father god let your right let your mighty right hand be upon us father god and lead us father god and make us a blessing for nations father god lord every one of us father god this is our heart's desire our heart's cry father god that we want to be we want to be effective father god in your kingdom father god in your kingdom in the expansion of your kingdom on this earth oh lord god almighty we thank you daddy we thank you father god lord thank you for leading us lord thank you for being with us oh lord thank you for guiding us through oh lord even if we if we may if things may seem to be so hard father god let our eyes be fixed on you oh god and let us let us walk father god the walk of faith oh lord father god give us the grace oh god to carry this mantle father god lord and fulfill that call that purpose that you have called us to father god hallelujah thank you lord jesus thank you lord bless each and every one of us oh lord and thank you for the wonderful pastor that you have given us oh lord father god i bless her in the name of jesus father god lord we thank you for this for this for this study and for this college especially father god lord thank you lord we i pray father god and increase lord god increase in the name of jesus father god lord we thank you and bless you in jesus mighty name we pray amen 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 thank you thank you so much for uh paul Liberto, isaac and roselyn for praying
Amen. So with this, we will end the session. And yeah, see you all in the next class with a few more revivalists. Thank you. God bless. Have a wonderful weekend. Thank you. Thank you, Ma. God bless you. Thank you. God bless.